speaker is Tasso Karkanis. He will be presenting us um, uh, some work he's been doing with C20 and around modules and Eigen. Tasso has over 20 years experience designing and implementing 3D graphics software systems, mostly in C++. He currently serves as the chief architect at Augmenta AI, a Toronto-based startup focusing on bringing generative design to advanced manufacturing, architecture, engineering, and construction. So Tassis, Tasso, I'm gonna be handing it over to you now. Okay, thanks, Jason. Okay, how's that? It's good, I can see it. Oh, thanks, okay. So um, my talk will be about Eigen, compile times, and C++20 modules. Uh, as soon as I get, okay. Uh, just a quick little <clears throat> uh, digression about Augmenta. Um, Augmenta was founded in mid uh, 2019. Uh, it's based in Toronto. We are about uh, 20 employees. And we're an early stage startup company developing generative design software and automation for customers in advanced manufacturing and AEC. <clears throat> uh, we design, develop, and deploy uh, generative design software and um, intelligent robotics and automation. And this is our mission to engineer a new human capacity for problem solving and to make it universally accessible. <clears throat> Okay, but uh, what about the C++? So um, we did a lot of uh, ge geometric processing uh, at Augmenta and uh, we uh, use the Eigen library for, um, you know, for the basis of that, uh, of that work. Um, if you're not familiar, Eigen is a C++ template library for linear algebra. Uh, the fundamental data type is, <clears throat> is the matrix class and it has um, these three um, uh, template parameters. There's the scalar type, the value of the uh, coefficients, uh, sort of the type of the coefficients in the matrix, and the number of rows and columns. Um, but actually, the special value of minus one for the number of rows and or you know, the number of columns uh, indicates that uh, you know that uh, dimension is supposed to be uh, dynamically allocated. So you can have um, compile time sized matrices, but you can also have dynamically allocated matrices. And if you're familiar with uh, NumPy or MATLAB, then uh, the types of array reshaping operations that, um, that Eigen supports uh, should be very familiar. And the main thrust of the library is to optimize statements at compile time. So, you know, so, so statements like this where where we are sort of composing a number of operations. Um, uh, it could also be multiply or you know, uh, sort of arithmetic operations with matrices and vectors. But this is an example of pulling out a row from a matrix and uh, transposing it and casting it. And uh, the template meta programming in, in Eigen um, will sort of optimize those operations, will elide um, what what a naive implementation might, you know, make copies for each of those um, components of that expression. Uh, though in, in the best case, those copies can be elided and, um, and the computation and the assignment can be uh, optimized. Um, so I can explain everything, but uh, it does uh, sort of cause really long compile times. So, uh, this is one of our code bases, uh, and I just pulled out the the uh, files that took the longest to compile. This first this first one at 50 seconds. I'm not kidding. 50 seconds for the compilation of this one file, and that's on a modern CPU. I have a relatively recent uh, AMD CPU. Uh, this first one um, we can't blame entirely on Eigen. It also uses OpenVDB, which is a you know voxel processing library that's also you know template heavy. Uh, but some of these other ones are, are Eigen um, plus IGL, which is uh, a, a triangular mesh library that uses Eigen, that's in, implemented on top of Eigen. And we sort of get these crazy compile times. Um, <clears throat> so we have some outliers, but there's a good number of uh, modules that are in the you know, 10 to 20 seconds. 
And I sort of show the uh, size of the object files produced afterwards, which, which isn't outrageous. Like this is actually in tens of megabytes. I'm not a, I'm not a pandas and matplotlib expert, but uh, they're they're sort of around one to two megabytes for the most part. So that's not completely outrageous, but the time is quite long. So um, maybe C++ modules can help. Um, and so that's what I, that's why I sort of did a little investigation. So if you're not familiar with modules, um, modules can replace header files. Um, they introduce a hierarchical namespace of, of, of modules, uh, sort of like namespaces, um, but the module names and the namespace names don't necessarily uh, coincide. And um, what sort of happens is that symbols and translation units are explicitly supported with some new, uh, exported uh, with some new syntax. And then you can effectively run the compiler twice against that C++ file, once to produce an object as usual, and once to produce a binary module interface, uh, which sort of contains the, the exported symbols. And if you read the, the details about modules, there's, there's tons and tons of information and complexity surrounding you know, exactly how things are exported and stuff. But, but fundamentally, this is what's going on. So in your um, C++ file, you declare that this is a, a, a module, you know, that, that you're going to be creating modules from this file. And then you name the module that you want to export, and then you put export on all of the symbols that are supposed to be uh, exported from this module and sort of have some presence in the binary module interface file. So in this case, it's all of the symbols in this, you know, basically in this time that we open the hello namespace. And then from your C++ file, you can import uh, the module and how exactly that works uh, is implementation dependent, but essentially the compiler is opening that binary module interface file that was produced when the, when the module was compiled. Okay, so um, I didn't wanna you know, rewrite all of Eigen. Um, I was really trying to um, you know, turn it into a module sort of from the outside. And so I was curious if that is something that can be done. So can we write a separate module definition for an existing library kind of without modifying it? Um, so my first plan of attack was to declare as exported all of the classes, functions, and variables, and types, because uh, it's not just you know, traditional symbols, it's, it's type definitions as well that are exported. Can I declare them all export and then import the uh, sorry, and then include the eigen uh, headers and have it all work and compile that as a as a module, uh, because an important thing to understand is that uh, the very first time the compiler sees a name, uh, maybe symbol isn't quite correct. Probably should be name. The first time it sees a name, it needs to know that that's that that name is to be exported. So you can't just include uh, headers and then start exporting things. That's be the other way around. So you have to declare the everything. So I tried that and I tried it first with GCC uh, 11 and got very cryptic error messages um, as, you know, as I sort of had to add to that list of exported names and eventually some crashes as well. Um, but then I tried it with Clang and it worked much better. The error messages were better. I was able to sort of uh, make my first version of this module definition file, uh, sorry, the, the binary, um, module interface file. And I was able to write uh, a little, another translation unit that imported my Eigen module with a few simple expressions and compile and link it. So that all worked. Um, but eventually as I tried more expressions and more classes and types from uh, Eigen, uh, I got stuck where it, it somehow just couldn't find certain symbols. Uh, it, it didn't recognize that certain symbols were exported no matter how hard I tried. But fortunately, there was another um, option. Uh, now this one is entirely Clang dependent. So Clang has a native module system. I, I didn't even know this before uh, a little while ago. 
And they seem to have used this module system uh, to implement C++20 modules. Um, but, the, but this native module system also works for C and Objective-C and C++. And conceptually, it's kind of very similar, except one departure, one major departure is, is it supports what they call a module map file. And this is an example of a module map file. So this is not standard C++, this is eigen-specific um, syntax. Videos from the right. Also, if you have any questions, please. Uh, sorry, was that a question? OK, sorry, I'll just continue. Uh, so what you can do with this module map file is include a bunch of headers, uh, or so if you know, declare that a bunch of headers should all be exported as a module. So this is different than the um, standard syntax where you have to uh, declare, declare things as exported kind of the first time the compiler sees it. Um, and there is a way to invoke the compiler to against this module map file to generate the um, binary module interface. But what was documented was only a way to do that uh, for C. And when I tried to do it for C++, I ran into all these um, problems with uh, mismatch GNU C compatibility settings. And I had to sort of re reverse engineer how um, how Clang++ typically calls CC1, which is the parser, I guess, um, with all these options and sort of you know, hard code all those options. And, but finally, it did work. Um, uh, this crazy approach uh, did work. Um, and I got a nice big, yeah, they call it different things, PCM or BMI or whatever, like this module definition file. It was about 18 megabytes. And that might correspond to all of the names that um, were in my eigen uh, headers that I included. Uh, and I tried a bunch of different uh, syntax with eigen, a bunch of you know, client code, and everything seemed to work. Uh, it's quite nice. But I'm sorry, I, uh, I didn't have time to do the compile time comparison uh, against uh, sort of our entire code base you know, compiled in this way. And part of it is because of uh, other existing limitations. So finally, a few you know, comments um, or observations and predictions. Uh, so, so it turns out it's not that easy to retrofit C++ code bases with modules, uh, at least using the standard uh, syntax, like C++20 syntax that works across compilers. Um, the support in, in, the, in, well, at least GCC and Clang still seems a little raw for, for modules. And it's actually not, not complete um, according to the compatibility charts. Uh, support in build systems for modules isn't yet available. Um, uh, yeah, I uh, have some other thoughts about that. Um, but, but I have a sneaking suspicion that uh, even when everything works, um, modules are not really going to help too much with um, the kind of template compile time problems that I see with Eigen. And I suspect that's because uh, the majority of the time is probably not spent um, lexing and, and, and parsing the templates, but, but in you know, instantiation, which would have to happen anyway uh, at the call site where the templates are being used. So in every, in every other C++ file in our code base in our case. And uh, if you start reading about modules, there's lots of talk about compiler processes staying resident and module interface databases and lazy interface generation and, and stuff like that. And that all sounds really, really good. But I think the, as an industry, we have some experience with that. I, I can think of a few compilers that, that tried to have ex, external you know, template instantiation databases and uh, sort of that never really worked very well. Um, in my experience, but I'm curious to see what, what they'll come up with. Um, but to end on a happy note, fortunately, hardware is still getting faster. Um, and the new, newer CPU is maybe, you know, only 75% of the, of the compile time as the one I have right now. So that might be the best bet for accelerating our build times at the moment. All right, thank you very much.